you've given us such great music over the years. Uh, we, we love the records. We're curious to find out who were your heroes? Who inspired you growing up to really want to do this yourself? Well, um, when I was a little kid, you know, three, my, I had a teenage brothers and sisters. This is in the 50s. <laughs> That's 1950 kids. Um, so I was surrounded by that. Down, we moved down to Texas. My dad was in the Air Force. There was just mu music everywhere. Yeah. And uh, what sunk in was actually mostly rockabilly and soul music. Yeah. And the way that they weren't quite rock and roll, but if you took them and put it together, it was, it was so I've beginning. always followed that policy of never really listening to much regular rock and roll. Yeah. I try to listen to the pieces that they originally used and then put it together. What's the hybrid of, of so much music after, you know, the great rhythm and blues from the South and, you know, the, the, the rockabilly and the early rock, you yeah. know, it really created so much. So how did you start, you know, playing in bands or how did it evolve to finally well, get a um, record deal? It took a while. My big brother was in all kinds of bands when, we, when I was young, but I was too shy. Back in the early 70s when I was in college, we just hated all the music so much that we... Uh, uh, my sister sent me her 45 collection and I started a 50s rock and roll band. And uh, one thing led to another. Hmm. Next year was the 60s. And we... Uh, I spent a lot of time learning all the different styles of music. And, uh, I have a different persona for each music. Tommy Tutone is a rock and roll guy. I have a, I'm a country western singer named Johnny Beige. And I had a, a swing band. My name was Desmond Tone. So it's, it's kind of schizophrenic in here. Sure. So I just like the way it all goes together. Um, Actually, reggae music brought me back to rock and roll in the late 70s. I don't know any of the 70s rock and roll. just went right by me. I was in soul music and country music and all kinds of other stuff. Please grab some coffee. Drink as much as you like. Yes. <laughs> well, tell us about the uh, evolution that became Tommy Two-Tone. Where did that name come from? How did the band come together that, that we know it today? Well, where I lived, uh, this is in Northern California, folks, and that post-hippie era, 70s, and graduated from college, moved up to a little town in Mendocino where everyone had a nickname. I mean, a guy sold a refrigerator to somebody and his name was Refrigerator Jim for 20 years. It was like this town where you moved, immediately split up with whoever you moved into, you made up a new name and went on from there. And uh, my old jacket from that 50s band said Tommy and the Teen Tones, and Somebody, and I had an old 54 Chevy, so I became two-tone. Mm -hmm. And that was my nickname, because Tommy Heath is very hard for me to pronounce. I always have to spell it. And uh, we uh, moved back to San Francisco in the late 70s, and uh, I found a partner, Jim Keller, and we wrote songs, and we were distinctly unpopular in San Francisco, but people from L.A. thought we were in Texas and Florida. Mm -hmm. Thought we were really good, but we were named Two-Tone Keller, and they said, we hate that. So I gave my name to the band. So that immediately confused everybody with the kind of blondie, Leonard Skinner. Kind sure. Of thing. Alice Cooper. I mean, yeah. is, it, is it the band? Is it the singer? Right. But it gives you something to talk about in early, early interviews when you don't know how to talk too well. <laughs> so, and... Uh, as you may have noticed, I treat interviewers as free psychiatrists. <laughs> so I'd say just about anything. So, well, we, It's all how I feel today. None of it's written in stone here or anything. Sure. Well, obviously the, the, the Jenny song changed your life and certainly had people changing phone numbers. So tell us again the classic story of the evolution of how that song came about and how you actually picked that number. Well, 
It was a real number, and it really belonged to Jenny. And uh, I learned my lesson because People Magazine put my phone number in their article about me. <laughs> so they got me back for that one. Um, you know, it's just kind of rolled off the tongue. Never thought much would come of it. And, and this was a girlfriend, somebody you had your eye on? No, she was a girl who had an eye on... She was a girl who uh, ran the sound in a club in Monterey called The Club. Great place. She gave me her number to give to my guitar player and I wrote it on the bathroom wall. I was not as nice as I am now. Um, <laughs> I think I did. That's a story I tell. So anyway, they made a song out of it, you know. And it was her parents' number, and they changed it. And that was that. All kinds of crazy stuff. How many stuff hundreds happened. of calls did they get before they figured out I, they needed I, to change it? You know, people tell me <laughs> phone call. I personally have never called it, but um, I hear phone stories all the time. Of course. Now, would it have been as catchy if the number was different? Are those numbers? You know, that's did that flow? The, that's the million dollar question. There's some <laughs> kind of thought control going on here. Sure. I don't know the answer. Wow. Well, you know, we've got um, so much music that has inspired others and, and, and certainly that's, uh, you know, made, made your career memorable. What advice would you give to those young artists, young bands, young songwriters coming up today? It's a different world than we came up in, but still they've got music in their heart. But what do they have to concentrate on or not think about to really stay focused on finding their own style, their own voice, and hopefully having any kind of longevity? Well, that's what I would focus on, your own voice. I'm, I don't, you can't compete on chops or anything. Mm -hmm. People don't really care. Um, I, I can't play guitar or sing as good as a lot of people, but when I, as soon as I start singing, you know it's me. Mm -hmm. so find your own voice. And, um, Probably do everything I didn't do, because look, here I am. I gotta be rich. I mean, I know you gotta, you gotta love what you do. You gotta do it for the passion yeah. as opposed to a quick buck. You know? Yeah. Any? I, you know, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm playing for therapy and trying to make a couple bucks out of it. Yeah. And anything you've done to kind of adapt to the changes as far as the whole internet thing or the the changes in the business? I, you know, I'm not doing a great job on the internet. I work in computers, I'm a software guy, and when I come home from work, I just want to play my guitar, so. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great new world out there. I wouldn't be the guy to get advice on that end of it. Sure. Because I'm really, really private guy. So music's kind of a diversion for you. You can kind of escape. No, I, I just can't focus on it all the time. I really have to get away from it to do it right. I, I work at forgetting how to play. And then I practice for a day and go play a bunch of gigs and it's, I sound completely different than I did two weeks before. So it's my way of developing it. It's not really uh, recommended to be a great guitar player, but it helps with your originality and the kind of that original punk vibe where you just pick up a guitar and start playing and come up with it. Primitive style. So I do that every couple of weeks. So. That's, that's me. And again, probably should do the opposite I do. <laughs> now, how about um, you know your latest your latest work? What can you tell us about what you're working on? I am working on part two of a. Uh, I, uh, I just did an album. Uh, I guess it's, it's gone on three years ago. It's called Soul Twang. I did in Tennessee and Memphis and. Again, mixing those styles that I like. And so I started on Soul Twang 2, and as we get done, if there's both, a, I got about 16 songs in there, and I'm trying to decide whether to, there's a great Tommy Two Tone record in there, too. Mm -hmm. The songs, you could tell they come out of these different styles, and a great song would be. Something that's modern, like, and I, I always said it's about Martha and the motels, and that her songs are totally 80s, but you could hear Roy Orbison in the background. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going for, and uh, so I've got, 
I may put out two records at once, Soul Twang 2 and, and the New Town Shoot on album, but I think they're really good. I'm singing, singing the way I always wanted to sing now. Now, what name does the Soul Twang come out under? It, it, Probably all going to be Tommy Two Tone. Okay. Every right. time I try to put out, I've tried to put out my country western records under Tommy Heath or something, and some record company they'll balk at the last moment. So it's like I'm a brand, a brand name. Sure. Continuity. Now, what is it about that that incredible musical heritage in Memphis that inspires you? Gee, uh, I always loved Memphis music, uh, even this. When I was in San Francisco in the 60s and everybody was listening to them, I was listening to Booker T and the MGs and Otis Redding and stuff. Stacks. Uh, I'm a Telecaster player, so I like Steve Crowder a lot. Yeah. The simplicity of it appealed to me more than Motown Soul, which I like too, but not as well as stuff from down oh, that okay. way. I just had the right amount of the guys coming up from Mississippi to play. And just the way the black and the white mixed together. Yeah. Seemed like it was the, the epicenter of, you know, human rights and everything coming together, the interracial bands. Just think and they found the perfect blend of the best of white music and black music and created this other stuff. I mean, Memphis soul music is really rock and roll. Yeah. So, but... Who can define it all? I mean, Booker T, their records are rock and roll records, but they're backing up Otis Redding live in Europe, so I don't know what. Sure, that whole mixture. And then you got yeah, Elvis, Elvis in there bringing us, you know, black music mm -hmm. through through his vision. Um, and they appreciate it when I go down there, because I'm, I might, I never know what I'm, I'm going to get on stage and just hop honky side will come out or I'm, I'm a pretty good soul singer but I'm also a pretty good rockabilly singer so I never know what I'm going to do I, the guy that you're talking to here isn't the guy that sings on stage he's he's locked up over here and he comes out I can't let him out off stage he's like Jerry Lee Lewis he's uncontrollable <laughs>